Hi guys, welcome back. Today we're going to be showing you some planting in uh, containers. We're going to plant out in the veggie patch. Um, we're going to do some harvesting and uh, all around good fun. I think we're going to release the baby chickens and uh, show you yeah, what we've been up to and what we're about to do today. So this is all that is left of the nursery. We're going to plant some of this out today. Now this was the spinach, quite a low germination. Better than the Savoy cabbages, which none have come up. Got some rainbow chard, Siberian kale, the Cavalineros looking nice and healthy. I think these are the Paris Island, a variety Charles Dowling recommended. And then more French beans and some beetroot. Outside the back door we've got Rocket coming along nicely. Sarah's cherry tomatoes. Starting to get a little bit of colour in there now. These are laden with fruit. <laughs> a bush of mint. And that's how deep the pot it's in. The hand's depth. And that isn't even filled up with soil. And yet, that is chest height. Quite amazing how vigorous that stuff is. So, we've already harvested some runner beans and they're ready to harvest again. Now they really, they really start growing once you get, uh, once they get going. It's quite amazing really. Sarah's given them a bit of a organic feed and they've bushed out lovely now. She's had a little session thinning the carrots. The crown prince is looking good. The French beans climbing really well. The container bed, one metre square garden. Well, now it's protected from the sparrows. It's doing really well. Everything looking very healthy. The French bean, uh, the runner beans that were amongst the bellotties, we've thinned them down. I mean, there was about four or five strands per plant. We've chopped it down to two or three. Looks pretty wilted for the next couple of days, but they've started to pick up and bounce back. The raspberries have put out tons of fresh growth. Uh, quite amazing how things grow, it really is. The Cavalinero, I mean that was just a mess of holes if you remember after the sparrows and now they have come back really well. The beetroot, perpetual spinach, Siberian kale, what's left of the Jericho, we've been getting frequent harvests off all of it. It's um, absolutely amazing. The spring onions, I mean, some of them just like absolutely huge. You know, we've been eating them every day. Now these are the Jericho lettuces Sarah's planted out. Here we did have the bed of butterhead lettuce. That's all gone now. These have gone in to replace it. In the back here, we've got more perpetual spinach that Sarah's planted out. All looking very happy with themselves. Behind the leeks, Sarah's planted out the new Jericho lettuces. And these are the little gems. And as you can see, the red lettuces, just beautiful. We've had quite a, quite a few handfuls of them in our dinners. The onions just doing their thing. The strawberries we got out of their overcrowded containers and put them in here just as a matter of survival really, not expecting much. But we've got loads of runners coming off so we're going to show you us what we do with these. 
This is the curie. I've got lots of little squashes on the curies now and considering they did nothing for ages, it's a minor miracle. Courgettes, I mean, we have eaten, I can't even count how many courgettes we've had now. Prolific is the word, I think. And the little rhubarbs, they've found their feet, starting to look good. The ducks and the dumpies are having fun in the, uh, the straw pile. They spend their day in there hunting for worms and insects. I absolutely love it. And here's a marrow Sarah picked earlier. <laughs> a courgette marrow. Very nice. So I'm going to plant out these baby cavalineros. Or a cavalinero, as the Italians would have it. And they get to about 10 inches in radius. So. Allow for another 10 inches in between. That makes X marks the spot. As always, a firm squeeze, gentle pull, give the roots a little tickle, get them growing outwards, and in she goes. Give it a firm firming in. Now that one looks pretty kaput. Well, it's got some fresh roots on it. <laughs> I'll plant that out of the way. Now Sarah just said to go quite deep with them. If you see here, these are the seed leaves. And what you can do is just pinch them off and then bury the plant up to here, which will give it more support from the wind and it will actually root from this point. Okay, that's the cavola nero planted out. I'm just going to cover it back up with the netting. And we've got some more baby kales that are not quite ready to go out, so they can go in that area at the front. So this is the Paris Island, the coslettis that Dowding recommended. And they're going to go into this bed that did have the butterhead lettuce, and it's still got some Jericho in it. Again with like seedlings, you're going to get this weak stem, so you can just pinch off the lower leaves. And just bury it to this point, that way they'll be a lot sturdier. Now these are Jericho and what we have seen immediately obvious is the Jericho seedlings versus the Paris Island. The Paris Island just look so much healthier from the start. They've grown a lot quicker, much stronger seedlings, better colour and I can, you can already see why Charles Dowding recommends them. They're, um, if the seedlings are anything to go by the plants should be amazing. And we thought the Jerichos were really good, so looking forward to see how these develop. So for comparison, here's the Jericho seedling. And here's one of the Paris Island seedlings. Exactly the same soil, conditions, planted at the same time. Um, the Paris Island's much greener, 
bigger seedling, much stronger looking, healthier looking. So there we go, that's the Paris Island planted out. Look forward to watching them develop over the coming weeks. So this is why no dogs should be allowed in the veggie patch. <laughs> Betsy Brassica has decided to have a little snooze in here. So I guess we'll be having spring onions for dinner tonight. Half in, half out. Make your mind up, Bets. Filled the baby bath up, mostly with just some topsoil. I'm just gonna put a bit of organic compost on the top. Two things to keep in mind with lettuce is that A, they don't need a rich soil and B, their root system is very shallow so you don't need a container this deep by any means. It's just what we've got on hand. Now we're going to put some Jericho lettuces in here and really there's two ways of doing it. You could put two in, one either end and allow them to grow into decent sized lettuces or if you think you might be eating more frequent amounts of lettuce then you can do what Sarah suggested and put four in and that way you'll get smaller lettuces more frequent harvests and uh, more frequent harvests so you know the choice is yours really do you think you're going to have lettuce once or twice a week if so maybe just put two plants in let them grow a bit bigger we're going for the four approach. Again, I'll pinch off the lower leaves, bury them a bit deeper. Never be afraid to firm them in. You don't want any air pockets in there, you want the roots fully in contact with the compost, soil. And there you have it, a little baby bath of lettuce. I think we're going to put, we're going to do a Siberian kale in this bucket? Yeah. Yeah, so we're going to, again, put some topsoil in this bucket, top it up with compost and we'll get a Siberian kale in there. So this is one of Daisy's favourite places to sit lately, on top of the little mound. Very cute. So I filled up the bucket with topsoil. I found that as I went through. Here in Scotland people generally buried their rubbish in the back garden, so you find all sorts. Now I'm just going to top it up with a bit of compost again. And there we have it. Now, onto the strawberry runners. So, I'm sure most people know this, but those of you that don't and haven't grown strawberries before, they'll grow these runners. And you can identify them by the fact that they're a stem with a growth on the end, as opposed to just a leaf. And what you can do with these is several techniques. But the easiest one is just to put it in the ground 
and put soil over it. So here's another runner coming off the main plant. All I do, make a little hole, put that stem in under the compost and cover it over and it will now form roots from this point. Once it has you can cut the runner there and you've got a whole new strawberry plant. Now this runner was just growing off the side and you can see here the little nodules where it's already forming roots. So I'll just put that in the ground, do a little bit of weeding while I'm here. Someone's worn themselves out from their hijinks. Haven't they? Eh? <laughs> little tail. What trouble? So here's the French beans that were planted out a week ago. They've started growing through the mesh, looking very healthy. The brothers and sisters over here were a bit small at the time, but they've grown nicely. So I'm going to get them in these pots here. Now we've got nine and three pots. So give the roots a little teasing out, a little tickle. To be honest, I'm not going to plant these too deep because uh, I want the length to reach the, the meshing. And you can see behind here it's a bit of a wilderness and no man's land. So I'll be going around there and doing a bit of weeding just to allow as much light in as possible. Now because this one's quite tall, it's already got the length to reach the mesh. So I'm just going to gently feed it through. Bring it back again. And there we go, that'll work out what it's got to do. So I mean gardening really has many benefits. You've got, you know, the incredible benefit of being outside working on your, you know, your physical being and your mental self. But then, like, we've had just endless dinners with our own organic veg, courgettes, lettuces, cucumbers, uh, spring onions, and we'll see, we've had our first run of beans. Um, you know, so you've then got the, the benefit of having fresh organic produce. And up here in Northern Highlands, you can just about buy organic spuds and that's it really. So, you know, we've got very fortunate to have all this lovely fruit and veg to eat as well. So, um, you know, whether you've got a massive plot like us that you can make use of or just a few containers, you know, it's, the benefits are quite vast. So, yeah, really, um, really hope that everybody starts making a go of it you know it's, you don't need a lot of time you can see we've done quite a lot today in the space of a few minutes so you know a little bit of hard work pays dividends in the long run so we've been keeping these girls separate for two reasons one so the other girls can get used to seeing them and the other reason because these girls are growing, they're on growers pellets and they can't eat the lame pellets. So uh, now they're ready to be re well to be introduced to the other girls, we're gonna sw swap the old lot onto growers pellets until these are all laying and then uh, they can go onto the uh, layers. So we're now gonna free them. Thank 
That's our first curie. So 
we've got a squash that was hiding in the uh, greenhouse and we're just going to plant it into this bucket. Got a bit of concrete at the bottom, top soil on top of that. Give the roots a little tease out. Fill it up with some compost. Probably a bit late in the year to be doing this, but nothing ventured, nothing gained. There we go, squashing a bucket. Sunny spot. See about there. Job done. <laughs> so we've got some Russian kale, some Siberian kale and some Cavalanera to go with the courgettes and the runner beans we picked for dinner. No, these are not for you girls. No. So you really don't need a patch as big as this. You don't need a lot of space at all, to be honest. Off one, con off one cucumber plant that's already given us a handful. Off the Beth Alpha that's already given us a good handful. We've had more cucumbers than we can eat off just two plants, let alone the four we've got. You know, we're forcing ourselves to eat <laughs> salad every day. Spring onions. A massive handful of red oak leaf lettuce, and that's just picking the outer leaves off a couple of plants, literally a couple of plants. And then again. An even bigger handful of cos lettuce. I mean, not only have you got the, the joy of farm to table, but there's also the, the joy of growing things from seed, planting it, watching it develop, go through the life cycle. Great for kids, great for adults. Um, and if you have never grown your own, you know, the, the farm to table thing just cannot be underestimated. I remember 
gosh, it must be nearly 10 years ago, I had a friend come back from work and I picked some rhubarb and I made a rhubarb full. And, uh, you know, it just blew him away. He'd never had anything like it because he'd never had any homegrown produce. The, the taste that you get when it's picked and put on your plate is second to none. So, um, yeah, it just, I, th I think it's all too easy in this day and age where we're so busy constantly thinking about 50 things. You know, it's easy to put other things off, but if you set aside half an hour a week, say, just, just go with it, just see what happens because I think stress is really the cause, the root of pretty much all of man's ailments. You know, it's, uh, I think it's pretty much established fact at this point that when you're stressed, you're operating in the so-called fight or flight mode. You know, hormones, adrenaline, your body's flooded with chemicals and it just cannot sustain that. And when you live in that, that frame of mind, that, that mode of fight and flight for too long, you'll get unhealthy, you'll get diseases and ailments. So, you know, meditation is great. But coming out into the garden, that, that's a form of meditation. You know, you, you take your mind off all this outer world crap and, you know, put your heart and soul into something and, uh, you know, reap the rewards. This is literally us every night just a basket full of produce and um, yeah it's just good for the soul.